We're here until 6 o'clock, and we have some uh, special guests. Yeah. promised you when I said that they were going to be here. They're from the Worcester Tea Party. I said that um, last time I checked, they had no horns sticking out of their head. <laughs> uh, they weren't toothless and didn't have an eye in the middle of their forehead. And no brooms, um, because it's a general perception out there by some people. You know, this is what Tea Party people are all about. Um, there were no guns. There were no axes. I, um, I feel very safe. So uh, having said all of that, we'll introduce Bonnie Johnson, Lorraine Foster, and Kim Shepard, all of the uh, uh, three members of the Worcester Tea Party that have it's joined us tonight. Seven Hills. Worcester Seven Worc Hills. Worcester Seven, Seven Hills, Hills Tea Party. Party. I know. It's confusing. Yeah, I'm gonna sorry. Get, we're going to shorten this business card somehow. We get this I, over. You know, well, a lot of people are saying Seven Hills Tea Party. Well, I, I, I did say that, but yep. uh, then I went down and I said Worcester Seven Hills. Anyway, anyway, this <laughs> is a, there, uh, there is a Worcester Tea Party, then there's a Worcester Seven Hills Tea Party, but, you know. Um, the difference is the Worcester Tea Party deals with more county. Right. Wide issues, so. and uh, they're dealing with city issues, and I'm and I'm I'm glad they are because they're an advocacy group for people, and this is what it's all about, and for better government, and this is what uh, this uh, this action is all about. Um, Bonnie, let me start with you. Um, we had talked um, a couple of times. We've certainly been on the show a couple of times. You uh, you worked on abatements yes. uh, after the last assessment came out, and by the way, just for clarification, that last assessment that we all got, um, anyone that lives in the city of Worcester. Uh, that's not the revalued assessment. The city was not ready to do the revaluation, and they had some software uh, problems. So if you think um, you're not too happy now, <laughs> wait till you see next year's, because that's going to be the full fair cash value, supposedly, valuation placed on all residential and commercial property, because the uh, law c uh, constitutes that every three years you have to have an actual valuation. Is it every three or ten? I thought it was three. three. Oh, my um, goodness. So you're going to... Um, you're going to have this thing um, looking at you, whatever the mm -hmm. ramifications will be. And mm -hmm. So you have to stay very vigilant. So why don't we start off with you, a little explanation about what you're doing, uh, maybe a little bit about the Tea Party um, and why this issue, and then we'll get into this thing a little bit, talk a little bit about what it's all about. Thanks, Jordan. Um, so I'm from the Worcester Seven Hills Tea Party, as we you know all are, and um, we, in... Last fall, we're trying to decide, you know, into the winter what we could do to help people and just, you know, be a good neighbor to people. And one of the things that um, one of the gentlemen came up with was doing abatements. He said it was really needed. He had had a really hard time filing his abatement the, fi the prior year um, and that it would be a really good thing for us to offer to the people. So we started kicking around the idea because you have to do a fair amount of under, you have to it takes a while to understand the abatement process yeah, it's and not what easy. you have to get it's it not is, easy certain it prerequisites it's not an easy thing it is not something <clears throat> that someone like mrs foster could pick up a piece of paper and fill out and submit to city hall it took us finding a realtor and so i found kim shepherd um a, a realtor from Caldwell Banker who came in and um, was willing to give us a lot of time and come to all of our meetings and pull the MLS listings that people needed for abatement. So an abatement is, just to back up a bit, people get their tax bills January 1st or January 2nd or the 3rd and they have until February 1st to file for an abatement which means they don't agree with what the value is for whatever reason and they want the assessor to look at it and consider um, abating some of their tax dollars and in order to do that we needed a realtor because you need to support your documentation with um, listings of houses that were sold of similar size and um, square footage to your house in this in a similar area so you need to have th we Kim came up with three listings for each piece of property um, that was in 2009 well they have to be similar but they have to be in the same neighborhood right as close um, as yeah. possible it's not easy this time of year to find a lot of houses that were for sale that were not foreclosed on yep um, I mean, those, the, the information is available at the assessor's office at the Worcester Public Library, and it used to be at the fire station, so I don't know. MLS listings? Uh, no, not MLS listings, no. but uh, the, uh, the values of homes that are sold, um, and all other assessments of all properties. So all that's public record. Mm -hmm. So it's out there, right. but what you do with it is a little bit more difficult than how you ascertain the type of house that you have versus the, uh, the comparable house. Mm -hmm. 
And that's where the MLS listing comes because you have the square footage, you have the layout, you have the land. Right. So you have all that. Well, you know, you're a realtor, so you right. know exactly what you're doing. We use the criteria that they asked for on the abatement application. Okay. So that's okay. the baseline that you start with Absolutely. right off the bat. Okay. Yes. So um, we set up three different times. We tried to do four. We tried to go to the Worcester Senior Center also. We thought that would have been a really good place because I think a lot, as we found out, a lot of the seniors are being really hard hit about through this process. Um, so we weren't able to go to the senior center because we couldn't use their computers. They thought it was a conflict of interest. So we ended up um, with three different nights at a location in Worcester and we invited people to come. And as we all know, Worcester was a very snowy, cold month. So we ended up only having two nights. And the first person in Lorraine had called me. We had publicized it and Lorraine had called and she was really, really, really upset. And her abatement had come, her tax had, bill had come in and, um, and it was significantly higher than she thought it was going to be. And as a senior, she had, you know, thought it was going to be X amount of dollars and um, and it was a lot higher. Yeah, I guess so. So she came in, met with us, and she was the first one that ticked us off and t tipped us off that something was going on. Right. And I'll let Kim take it from there. When Lorraine came in, we had already previously pulled comparable properties for her so that when people came in, we weren't running over to the computer to pull up the information. And we found a problem with the living area right off the bat because the comps I had pulled, the information I used for her property was 2010 assessment information. Okay. Okay. Which had. Which would be January 1st, 2010? 2009. 2009. 2009. Okay, the values of okay. nine. Yeah. Which were easy access right. for me in MLS, but her square footage was about 1,600 square feet. Okay. Okay, and she came in with her tax bill that had her somewhere in the ballpark of 2,400 square feet. And I said, well, these, com these aren't good comps for this. What's going on? So then when I pulled up her 2010 assessment, I saw the difference in the square footage. I said, did you put an addition on? No, I've been there 15 years. I haven't done a thing. <laughs> and as people were coming in that night, we were finding the same, not with everybody, but quite a few people. This was a pattern. It added, you know, added square footage. We had one woman, one woman who came in that kept track, I, and I can't remember her name, I wish I could. She had a spreadsheet for years of her whole neighborhood and how, how the square footage was always changing. And, you know, so that was our big tip off that, that there is a problem. And, you know, I said, maybe the data is, you know, however it's getting fed in, maybe there's a problem with the systems they're using. We didn't know. Let's file the abatement. Lorraine had her original you know plan of her house with the mm -hmm. square footage listed on it we submitted that as well the house has been the same for the 15 years that she lived there but somehow it grew a thousand square feet last year okay do you have a dormer on your house that's what he says that's where they're getting she, them. she does she, she she does have a dormer on her house and that's where they get it in the 1500 square feet. Yeah, it was included originally yes, it is. okay i went out and measured her property that is one of the um the areas that they have um when, when i had the assessor on uh, that's one of the areas they came up with and a lot of people uh, were very um, very upset because the damage were on the houses for um, ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Jordan, the question is, if you have a dormer on your house, would it he just go and add square footage to everybody who has a dormer on their house? Uh, I believe that's exactly the way it was done. I mean, that's a <laughs> lot of square feet. And I, I I believe that's exactly what happened. Um, as, no as, as as one of the things that has happened, I think that's one of the things that happened. New assessor, new software. Um, most ranch houses are roughly around a thousand square feet. Right. That would be one big dormer. Yeah, that would be. I mean, you know, so I mean, I I can't calculate it at all. I mean, I, I know how many square feet are in my house that are in living space, right. and I I didn't have an argument on my end. Um, the argument was uh, because I I do live there. Uh, my argument was where where have you been? You know, so people can say, well, you get away from it all these years, but that's not the point. Well, and ironic, but I also have a house that doesn't have, hasn't, because I don't have a, a, a seller, as you know as a realtor, right. I don't have the same sustained value as everybody else in the whole neighborhood. I'm the only house up there that does, that does not have a seller. Um, you have a split level. I have a split level, and we live, or, or we, we lived in the, in, the, in the lower part where it has like 10 foot ceiling, so it's not like a, you know, a, a basement. It's mm -hmm. not a basement. It's right. a split level home. It's a, 
uh, you know, so I, uh, you know, my argument is when you go to resale value of it, there's a downside to this. I don't have a seller. Um, and you know, as a realtor, that's, that's um, you know, walkouts are one thing, but that's another thing. So, I, I still, for from for my own, I'm going to ask Lorraine to give us some explanation. So, I'm still in a quandary about this whole value thing. And I've been let, around. Let this. me just show you. Okay, because okay. I've been okay. around this horn this for a thousand years, and I still don't understand how they get a value. So, right. anyone <clears throat> has access to go to the city. WorcesterMass.gov and look yep. up property values. This came from the page. Now this is this year's current assessment with Lorraine's new value on it. Um, and it went up 13? It went up, I mean her value went up um, $30,000 um, which is you know a lot but when you look here under dormers, do you see anything in no, dormers? No, it's not even listed. It's not even listed but that is what he keeps telling her. She'll tell you her story with him, with the assessor. But um, that is what in it. In okay, now Lorraine, let me ask you. You, you know, you, you found an abatement, yep. all right? What happened? Nothing. They denied it. No, he didn't deny it. He said he was going to give me seventy-five dollars off. Seventy-five dollars off your four thousand dollars tax bill. He was going to give me three hundred dollars. Okay, seventy-five dollars each bill. Yeah. Off of your four thousand dollar bill. Yeah. And what was so it went up? Uh, so it went down to thirty-seven hundred from four thousand eleven. That was the adjustment. So three hundred dollars and thirty-two cents. And the previous year, you paid how much? Eight hundred and forty-three dollars. Um, each each uh, each yeah, bill. Yeah, So you paid um, thirty-two hundred dollars. So yeah. your taxes actually went up about five hundred dollars. Is that what it is? I thought it was about six something. No, no, no. it was about five hundred. It had to be about. Go up. Yep, if my math is correct, it'd be about, about, about somewhere around five hundred bucks. Now they, right. there was an increase in taxes, and I don't know what. About a dollar, a little. I think maybe a little less than a dollar. Um, a thousand. A thousand. And her house is at two hundred forty-nine thousand, so that's two hundred forty-nine dollars. So in effect, uh, she's gone up over and above everybody else, a couple hundred bucks. Yep, and That's they reassessed appears. her new value is two hundred thirty-one thousand. Okay, so she went down from two forty-nine to two thirty-one. So you're down two thirty-one. Well, yeah, you're paying about one hundred and fifty bucks more than everybody else is paying. Um, but the way it looks, I but, mean, I'm just on for my but, own. But Kim did the comps on a house <coughs> her size at fifteen hundred square feet. Okay, yep. not twenty-five hundred. In the same neighborhood. Right. And. And as a result of that, her house should be even less than the 219. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I know some of them are out very, very well. I'm, I'm really kind of surprised. You must have a, an absolutely mansion up there because um, <laughs> Not, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really surprised at mm -hmm. the value. Um, you know, in, in an up market, maybe we'd have those kind of values, but not in a down market. I'm really, really surprised. So, so tell us a little bit about the story. What, what did you okay. run into? I mean, what were your difficulties uh, about right. this thing? I called him on the phone and I asked him what was the reason why my taxes went that were they had that was that high, and I was told that I have a dormer, mm -hmm. and I said, well, where is the dormer? Eric, I thought it was in the front because that's what he explained to me it was in the front, but he said no, it's in my back. So then I said to him, I said, well, I don't. I, this house was built 66 years ago. I did do nothing to the house. It's been exactly the way I bought it. So he says, well, I'll tell you. He says, if, you can't, if I can't get you for the drama, I'm going to get you for the back door. I said, wait a minute. You can't do that because every house has to have a two-way entrance, front and back, in case of fire. He said, well, how about your garage? I said, I don't live in the garage. He said, well, when I bought my house, I don't have a garage, and you're fortunate because you can put your car in the garage, and I can't. And he said, you can walk in from your garage into your house. I said, wait a minute. I can't do that. I have to do like you. I get out of my car. I have to go out to the inclement weather. I have to walk the walkway on the ice, snow, whatever it is. And I have to open my front door in order to be able to get into the house. So that's, I don't know where you're getting with this idea that I have a garage that I can walk directly into the house. Well, he was trying to find out some ways he could get me so that he could keep the taxes up high. So then after he got through with that, he said to me, he said, you know, I'm from New York. And I said, yeah, that's nice. And he said, uh, I lived in New York for three years, and he says, I'm 44 years old. And he was trying to help out with the low, low income housing, because that's what they're trying to put into the city, is low income houses. I mentioned to him that there was about 12% already. And I said, are we going to be like the other places that they have 10%? And I said, and what are they doing? They're putting rats, they're stealing, they're throwing trash around the place. I said, is this what the city's going to become of? And he said, well, that's none of your business. What? Now I'm getting a little bit disturbed. 
<laughs> so then I said to him, I said, well, again, I will pay what is given to me. And I said, that's $1,174.54. But still, I think that was kind of outrageous. So then he says to me, he says, well, let me explain this to you. He said, houses in your area, the above you, is 142000 It came down. Malut across the street is 154, which came down. The Ketz, which was 210 when they bought the property, has come down to 187. But he said the people that live above you is $313,000 because it's a real big house, right? And I said, what has that got to do with my property? He said, well, he says, what I'm trying to figure out to you is this, I'm trying to let you know that everybody around you went down, but you're not going to go down because I'm going to make sure you don't go down. Then he said to me, he says, uh, I see you had windows put in and siding. I said, wait a minute, those were on the house when I bought the house. Where do you get off with this? He said, well, it improved the property. I said, if I had known that, I probably would have never bought it. Then he mentioned that I was the only house on the street that looked the most decent. And I said, what makes it look so decent more than the others? He said, because you've got trees in the front of it. I said, you want me to take them out? He said, no, that's okay. So why don't you just take the second floor of your house off? And he says, and make it to a ranch. And the assessor was talking yeah, this, this way? Is how, well, listen to me while I explain this to you. Anybody who calls me on the phone, I have a habit of taking paper, and I write everything down in the conversation. So I'm not I, calling you. Huh? <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. I, I want you to keep that thought. I'm going to take a break. I'm not calling you anymore. Anyway, let's take a break. We're going to get right back with our friends.